What's up everybody? Welcome back to part three of my Snapmaker original three-in-one machine review. If you haven't already, make sure to check out part one and two of this series where I covered the 3D printing and laser engraving portions. Today in the final video in this series, I'm going to be covering the CNC routing capability as well as sharing some final overall thoughts for this machine. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Before we get started, I wanna give a shout out to Snapmaker for sending me this printer to review. I obviously wouldn't be able to make this video without you guys, so huge thank you to my friends over at Snapmaker. The first thing you'll notice when you get this machine is how truly small it is. And I don't just mean the work surface, I mean the entire machine. In fact, this machine is so compact that it fits comfortably on one of my other 3D printers, which I reviewed in a different video, so make sure to check that out. You're certainly limited to making small projects on this thing, but the fact that it can nicely fit on my desk or on top of my 3D printer enclosure is definitely a huge plus for this machine. There are times where I wish it was bigger, but given the fact that I'm in an apartment and I don't have a dedicated shop for a large format CNC machine, I'm super happy with the size. It also only weighs 10 pounds, so moving it around my shop isn't too difficult, and it could pass as a light dumbbell if this quarantine goes on much longer. This machine can easily be switched over from either 3D printing or laser engraving by simply swapping out the tool head and replacing the 3D printing bed with the CNC platform. Overall, it only takes eight bolts to switch from 3D printing and four bolts to switch from laser engraving. This makes it incredibly convenient if, like me, you're limited by space and can't fit a 3D printer, a CNC router, and a laser engraver into your shop. It features a 125 millimeter square work surface for laser engraving and a 125 millimeter cubed volume for 3D printing. The CNC work area is actually a little bit smaller due to the tie downs taking up some of that space, but I found that if I use some thin double-sided tape, I can get back some of that valuable real estate. The Snapmaker Original is made with extruded aluminum axes and other machined aluminum parts, and it utilizes a single Z-axis to support the X-axis and the tool head. This would normally make for a less sturdy machine, but the small footprint and rigid aluminum parts actually allow for a pretty solid build. However, it won't be sturdy enough to cut through anything stronger than wood, so if you're hoping to be machining aluminum, you'll need to look at other desktop CNC machines. You will, however, be able to carve wood, acrylic, PCB material, carbon fiber, and several other materials. On the subject of sturdiness, I found that the motors weren't quite strong enough to hold up the X-axis when the machine was powered down, which made it hard to swap out the tool head. But in the end, this was more of a minor inconvenience than anything. I also noticed that the build plate is not completely secure as you can easily tilt it slightly to either side with some light pressure. At first I thought this was because I didn't have the thumb screws fully tightened down all the way, but after checking on them I found that the extra wiggle room was caused by the mounting plate's connection to the lead screw. I was able to get the linear mount tightened down by taking the Y-axis apart and cranking down on the flathead screws that held the nylon bearings in place. This seemed to help tremendously in keeping the linear mount from wobbling. So moving past the specs of this machine, when I got started actually carving things with it, I was pleasantly surprised. When I first unboxed it, I had no experience with CNC routing, and the simple touch interface made it super easy to get up and running. On top of that, it comes with Lubin, which is the free software made by Snapmaker. Lubin's seamless integration makes it incredibly simple to get projects designed and manufactured in no time, whether you're 3D printing, laser engraving, or CNC routing. However, Lubin is definitely limited in its functionality, especially when it comes to CNC routing. In fact, the CNC routing tab in Lubin is still in its alpha stage of development. You basically have the ability to pick the bit you're using, the depth you want to cut, the speed you want to cut, and a few other minor things. That isn't particularly surprising when considering the rest of the machine so far seems to be geared primarily towards beginners or people that just want to have the flexibility to do multiple operations but are limited by space. Even with that in mind, I haven't found the CNC portion of Lubin to be very useful at all. In fact, it doesn't even have the undo function, so if I accidentally move a graphic or something, 
I have to replace it manually or start over from scratch. On top of that, you can't do any sophisticated cuts with Lubin, since the only option you have relating to the cut are the bit and the depth. Luckily, Snapmaker did provide a tool library and a configuration file for Fusion 360. So after some tinkering, I was able to get some really amazing looking cuts from this machine using Fusion 360 instead of Lubin. I won't cover how to get the tool library and the configuration file set up for Fusion 360 in this video, but make sure to check back in a few weeks so you can start preparing cuts with Fusion 360 yourself. I will say that Fusion 360 has a pretty steep learning curve, and given that this machine seems to be so far designed for beginners, the lack of proper software support could be a turnoff for some people, but if you found my channel, I'm willing to bet you're up for the challenge. So at this point, I had a CNC file ready to cut, so I set up the machine and, well, I got off to a pretty rough start. Like I mentioned in a previous video, this machine was briefly used by another owner before they decided they didn't like it and returned it. It turns out that before they returned it, they also sort of stripped the grub screw that holds the bit in the throat of the spindle. As a result, I couldn't quite find the right size of Allen wrench to tighten the grub screw down, so I got it as close as I could and I figured it'd be okay. Well, it turns out that running a CNC machine produces a lot of vibration and the bit actually shook itself loose and fell down into the workpiece. I was watching as this happened, so I quickly tried to stop the cut, but the machine didn't respond quickly enough to save the spindle. It ended up putting way too much stress on the spindle and bending it. So thanks to a stripped grub screw and poor judgment on my part, I no longer had a working CNC machine. On the bright side, this gives me a great opportunity to talk about the amazing customer service that Snapmaker provides. I seriously cannot praise their customer service enough. When I initially bent the spindle, I tried looking online to replace the motor myself since I was the one that broke it. But after failing to find the correct motor replacement, I reached out to Snapmaker instead. They not only responded within a day, but they also sent me a new rotor and a new CNC tool head for free. I admitted responsibility from the start, but they were still willing to help me out free of charge. This level of support completely blew me away, especially when compared to other 3D printing companies that literally won't respond despite numerous messages across several platforms. But we don't need to get into that in this video. For now, I just wanna focus on how amazing the customer support from Snapmaker is. With their help, I was able to get the machine put back together and finally continue working on this review. And now I have a backup CNC tool head in case I decide to ruin another spindle. However, even with the new tool head, the grub screw is not a great solution for keeping the bit attached to the spindle. It takes a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench to tighten it down, but after a few uses, I'm already seeing that it's starting to strip. On top of that, I noticed that the right side of the build plate seemed to be higher than the left side. So when trying to cut precise things like PCB routes, the left side of the design would hardly scratch the surface and the right side would cut so deep it ruined the copper traces. Luckily, I was able to track this down to the X axis being mounted just slightly off level and I was able to get it quickly adjusted. So far after a few cuts, I have been very happy with how this thing performs. It's super easy to access the build plate and secure and remove the workpiece, and the bits can be swapped out quickly so you can maximize your time cutting. My least favorite part about this machine would have to be the tie downs. I found that they eat up a lot of the work area and they're not very adaptable since they're pretty much stuck at a 45 degree angle. The Snapmaker 2.0 has addressed this issue with a new and improved tie down solution, so I can't wait to get my hands on one to try it out. Another downside to this machine is that the spindle tops out at 12,000 RPM, which is going to limit the speed that I can cut things. But again, it's not a very big build plate, so I can't see that affecting my projects too much. In the end, I think this is a great machine for beginners, or if you're experienced with Fusion 360, this could be a great little machine to add to your shop. But that's all for this video. Make sure to check back soon for a video on setting up Fusion 360 to work with Snapmaker. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Lastly, I've been messing around with different ways to create some merchandise for this channel, mostly because I personally want some things of my own, and I finally settled down onto a Teespring site so that I don't have to store the items personally. I'm not sure if it will be the solution that I'm looking for in the end, but for now I've got several different items for sale in my store, so make sure to check it out if you want some modern hobbyist merchandise of your own. Now, if you're directly related to me, then please, please don't feel obligated to buy anything. I don't want my whole family wearing modern hobbyist shirts at Thanksgiving. That would just be too awkward. 
Anyways, make sure to check out my Instagram and my Patreon page if you're interested in helping this channel out. Otherwise, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>